Wrestling fans, it's time for Fabulous Wrestling Talk, AEW. We are talking double or nothing. I am Jeremy York. He is my tag team partner, Clay Harden. How are you, bud? I am great. Uh, got to watch, um, got to go to a live event this week and see a friend of mine in the main event. And uh, you tag yes, along. Yes, great. Uh, that not the friend I'm talking about, but yeah, he was great. <laughs> uh, he pretty much carried the match. Um, but uh, I've had a I've had a full plate of wrestling this week. Oh yeah, yep. I actually uh, we rode over that show together. That's uh, that that Deep South show. I don't mind promoting them on there. Uh, it was really good. Uh, I will be the first to admit uh, I'm not gonna throw Eric under the bus like that. I thought he more than carried his part of of the uh, and it's not a fat guy joke, but he more than carried his part of it. I thought he did better than I thought he would. And so, Eric, I apologize for thinking that you weren't going to be that good. You, you were quite good. When you saw me go over to talk to him after the show, that's what I told him. I said, man, I thought you might <laughs> give us 10 solid minutes. I had no idea you were going to go this long. Yeah, and I saw the grin on his face. Like, he wasn't expecting that either, but that was the deep appreciation. Like, I'm glad somebody saw that I put everything into it. Hey, and if that's his last match, that's one to go out on. I don't think it's going to be his last match. No. It's but in hey, the blood. It's not every day you get to ride to an independent show with a WWE Hall of Famer. That's true. That's very true. And I guess quick story there is uh, you called me. I was I was uh, just dropping a friend off from church, about to go pick up another friend and go to this show. And you called and said, hey, are you going to the show? I said, yeah. Hey, you want to ride together? I said, sure, we can do that. I said, I got to go pick up a guy. And you said, all right, well, meet me uh, at this place here. Uh, around this time, we'll ride over there. He's, and you said, uh, basically, long story short, I got Robert Gibson in the car with me. I was like, done. We're there. I, I will easily speak for that buddy. I call, uh, I sent that guy a message, and I was like, hey, man, we're going to basically ride over the show with uh, – I said, you ever heard of the Rock and Roll Express? He said, yeah. And I said, you ever heard of Robert Gibson? He said, of course. And I went, you want to ride to the wrestling show with him? And he said, say what now? And I said, I'm going to be there in 10 minutes. Get in the car. He is uh... – he is – He's the same guy he was on TV back in the day. Oh, yeah. Very and he's, if you ever get time to just hang around him, he's got a bunch of good stories, and a lot of them involve Andre the Giant. I'll just leave it at that. I'm going to have to hit him up on those. But yeah, even my buddy said that. Not only did he say it was a good show and he enjoyed going, because me and him don't get to hang out as much. Uh, seems like just wrestling shows. But he said, no, nah, man, it was cool getting to meet everybody and everything. He said, and we rode to and from the show and – you know, it wasn't that, that when we got there, Gibson wandered off and did his own thing or he stayed as a recluse. No, no, no. We were all in open discussions about the show, about life in general, about complaining about clouds in the sky. It didn't matter. We talked about all kinds of stuff, and it just felt like a bunch of bros sitting around and, and not anything any different. He even offered you food off of his plate. Yeah, he did. I should have took it, too, but I was trying to be nice. So I wanted to make sure everybody else at the table had food. Well, as long as he got fed, that's all he's worried about. If he's offering oh, yeah. it to you, he's already had his fill. I'll just tell you that. And and since we're not going to get into it for a lot of different reasons, uh, still one of the the highlights of that of going to the show this weekend was uh, knowing who is his the best person of our group to send for a beer run. <laughs> and they sold and we it can't to get in, <laughs> We can't get into that for a lot of reasons, <laughs> but <laughs> what we can't. What we can get into is uh, is this AEW card that uh, will feature a lot of people that are probably good at beer runs as well. But um, I was telling you that AEW did something a little different than WWE. WWE has five matches, four of them completely solid, one is a match filler. AEW tried to see how many different matches they could have on the same card, and I think they're going to accomplish having a really good card. Three solid hours. Yep. And I, I look forward to seeing it. This is going to be great. Uh, well, you know, four, out of the game, four if you count the kickoff show. It's when? Four four hours if you count the kickoff show. Oh, yeah. I thought you were saying it started at four. I'm like, man, I'll be cutting it close now. No, no it starts at <laughs> seven. The kickoff show. Okay. And the main card at eight. Wow. That's going to be fun. Because the, the kickoff show, I don't even know what's on that. I only know what's on the main card here. Um, I don't know what they're going to start with. Because usually when they list this out, it is not for the most part, in the order it's going to go. Uh, we'll start with uh, Roderick Strong. is going to defend his belt against Will Ospreay. Uh, my quick analysis is this is going to be a really, really good match. It's going to be one of the best Roderick Strong matches you've ever seen because of Ospreay. 
and somehow interference is going to cost Osprey from winning the title? Um, maybe I don't know how you as much momentum as Osprey's gotten out and I keep him from winning the belt, but it kind of messes up the storyline with with yep. Roger Strong's faction having all the belts. So I'm I'm kind of torn on this one. Well, and here's the thing too, is Roderick Strong, as as much as is uh, I'm a small fan, not the world's biggest fan of him. I respect what he does, but he's holding down the fort for that faction right now until Adam Cole gets his face back on the screen. Somebody has to be the de facto leader, and it's Roderick Strong. Yeah, and well, he's not as funny as he was when he had the neck brace on and was yelling everybody's name. You don't do that anymore, but <laughs> I, I guess every stick has its course, and that one's running its course. But, yeah, he – He's done a really good job in Adam Cole's absence. Yeah, which uh, you know, hey Adam Cole, get get your face back on the on the screen. We need it. And and his wife or girlfriend, she needs to come back too. I hear she's probably going to be back before he will. Awesome. Because that's going to lead me into my next match, and the whole reason why, well, not the whole reason, but a lot of reasons why Tony Storm is going to retain against Serena Deeb. Uh, it's good. This is going to be a really good technical match. These two, you're going to see a lot of chain wrestling, a lot of old school stuff between these two. But Storm has to hold on to the belt till Britt Baker gets back. Yeah, I agree. Um, Deep, this may be her last main event type run. I think she's getting on up in age, and yeah, um, I don't know. Women seem don't seem to go as deep into their forties as men do, for whatever no. reason. And I think she's about my age. Uh, I think she's mid to late forties. So. Think so. This might be the last main event run for her. A lot of people don't realize she was part of the Straight Edge Society with CM Punk and Luke Gallows, you know, 20 that's years right. ago, 15 years ago. Yep. That's she, was, she was the female member that shaved her head. Yep. Took one for the team. Yep. And, uh, I mean, it got her to here, so I, I guess it worked. Yeah. And uh, she's she's well-respected in the around the entire wrestling community. Yeah. Um, I thought it was funny when um, Tony Storm stripped and wrapped herself in the flag. Her, her oh, I didn't flag. see that coming. And I was I was like, oh, okay, well, she's probably going to. And then I saw it and I was like, nope, she's really just wearing a flag. Yep, that's it. Just a flag on national TV. And then I, don't, I think this was part of it. But the fact that Dee saw it, grinned, and started chasing her was just made it that much funnier. Yep, yep. She probably didn't see it coming either. Because she looked, she like skipped off real quick. And I was like, yeah. and and the other people, Luther tried to run interference. I was like, yeah, I don't know if Deeb was going to chase her initially, but she decided this is going to be really funny on live TV. <laughs> the good thing they have, a, well, unfortunate for us, but good thing for their FCC license that uh, they didn't have a uh, wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, because uh, that that would have been bad, <laughs> real bad. <laughs> to see that uh, a malfunction on on TBS or TNT might uh, spell the end of them being on national television. Flashback to uh, the cat WWE, like maybe ninety seven, ninety eight. Yep. But they yep. survived that. Yeah, we'll see how he survives this latest wave. But that's a whole different podcast. Yeah. But uh. So far, we got champions retaining. We go to the next championship match where Adam Copeland, I know you're not familiar with him, uh, Edge. Him and Edge know each other pretty well. Uh, I know you remember Edge. Um, uh, he is going to defend against Malachi Black. I think the title's moving here. And there's a weird theory I saw where Malachi wins this and Copeland jumps and joins them. Um, it'd be interesting to have them as a four piece, but you don't need them in the house of black. I, I guess unless Copeland is just bored to death and wants something to do other than that, I think Malachi wins this straight up. Um, I think that like they're leading to that. They're hinting to that. I don't think he, I don't think he does it. I think he wins. I think he retains and keeps putting out, you know, four star matches with people like Will Ospreay and, and maybe maybe Roger Strong. I'd like to see him have another run with Christian. Um, oh, that's coming. That's probably the I, end match. Maybe Samoa Joe. I think in the end they end up together. Yeah, I, I think yeah. You'll know when Copeland is going to hang it up. I think him and Christian will tag. It'll probably be a TLC or something like that, and just Christian's going to send him out best way he can. I think they'll have a title run together for maybe a year, and then he'll call it a career. I like that, and, and I'd be behind that. Yeah, me too. But I think he retains here. Okay. 
I'm, I'm going to go Malachi. So we're going to disagree on one so far. Uh, this might be my vote for a match that steals the card. John Moxley is going to take on uh, Kanosuke Takeshita. And this one has potential to really tear it down because it's going to be that New Japan strong style. They're going to tear each other up for whatever 10 or 12 minutes they're allowed to. Yeah, Takeshi is a big, big, strong guy. Um, Moxley's a lot bigger than he looks on TV. Mm -hmm. um, both of them take a beating uh, when they have a, a match like this. Um, I, I think it'll be outside the ring a lot, maybe in the crowd. Uh, there's probably going to be some color come into the to the match at some point. Uh, both of them bring that up. Will be involved. Both of them's chest will be blood red. Uh, this will probably be. I don't know tech like on a technical scale if you would give it match of the night, but on <laughs> a entertainment factor, it's it's probably oh, yeah. going to be match of the night. These are if um, you know if Will Ospreay is not your forte, and and I don't know if we can be friends if it's not. Um, if, if him versus Strong is not your type of match, if the technical, you know, D versus Storm is not, if Copeland versus Malachi and, and the weird wizardry and, and David Blaine-like magic tricks that'll happen in the middle of that one's not your thing, Mox versus Takeshita is is just going to be a barn burner. Yeah, yeah, this will be your match. This will be the, the hard-hitting, chest-slapping. Uh, both of them probably going to be bleeding from the forehead by the time it's all said and done. There will be interference from both sides. Um, oh, yeah. The, the uh, callous guys are going to come down and interfere, and then then the Blackpool Combat Club is going to come down and interfere. So it, it'll be entertaining. Which, as far as is the Combat Club, I think it's only Claudio. I think Yuta's on the shelf, and Danielson's in a match later, so it may just be Claudio on his side. Yeah, but Danielson, even though he's in a match, he can still come down. Or We That's may true. have a new... We could have a new member to the Blackpool Combat Club. Are you hearing things, or is this wishful it's thinking? A, it's just a theory. They like to they like to have debuts on pay per views. They do. Is it a new person of the company or somebody in the company? Uh, it's it's probably if anybody if it's anybody, it'd be a, a, a return of some sort. Okay, that could be interesting. But uh. I think Mox is going to win this one. I, I, it doesn't really matter who wins, but Mox more than likely will. I do know this. Um, I do think Mox wins this one. Um, I've been reading a lot. I don't think that MJS on on course for a return yet. I was I was going to bring that up at some point because we spent the entire uh, me and Daniel on the WWE and spent a lot of time trying to figure out when uh, Uncle Howdy and his group were going to show up on that one. And the big question on this one was, is it time for MJF to come back? And I don't know that this is the card to do it. I think there's way too many moving parts for him to to show up yet. And uh, you got to get Swerve a few more wins under his belt before you worry about MJF coming back. It's going to be a uh, – it'll be a night where uh, the kingdom – and Roger Strong and Wardlow are heavily fe uh, featured in the main events. Yeah. That's when he'll come back. Yeah. And, but I was reading know, an article that, that says he's about two months away, at least two months away from, from coming back. Yeah, that's that's what I'm kind of hearing about Adam Cole, too. So, you know, Adam Cole's about a month, month and a half of coming back, I think. So you know, that, that kind of lines up, right? They're going to keep them both away for about the same amount of time, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, the next one is a match that I still it still baffles both of us as to why they they did this and and it's it's going to end up hurting uh, both, including their big cash cow. Uh, Trent Beretta is going to take on former best friend Orange Cassidy. It's going to be a good match because the two of them can work, but just the all of a sudden Trent splits up and uh. Forgot the other guy. Now, uh, Chucky, he's That's gone that. now. And... So so here's the thing. If you're going to split them up, I can understand having Trent turn on Orange Cast. That's a good yeah. story. But the best friends were originals in AEW. Like, they were a tag team when the company started. Well, and actually, they – yeah, they, they were the best friends since before that. But um, if you're going to split them – why not put Rocky Romero back with Trent Beretta and let them be Rapongi Vice like they were all across the world until they got an AEW? And or if you're going to throw them back together, 
leave uh leave Chuck and and have Chuck turn his back on Orange too and leave the best friends together and and leave Orange Cassidy out on his own. Cause and that way Orange when they Ca- do Orange Cassidy can stand alone. I'm not sure Chuck Probably. Taylor can. Probably not. He's always been a tag guy. Yep. And so is Trent. Yeah, and but see what Trent did to him, though, it's it's pretty much, that's a finalization. You can't go back when you shatter somebody's ankle or whatever he actually did to him. In yeah. that. You kind of can't go back on that. Yeah, I, I, think just didn't, hanging I, it up. I didn't like the, the, the best friend breakup storyline. I just didn't like it. I mean, if you want to just have them split, like uh, just get mad at each other and walk off, then that's fine. Leave Orange standing there by himself. I mean, that kind of he's a loner anyway. Yeah, but the the they were so over with the fans. Oh yeah. They they are the new day of of AEW where the new day can throw pancakes and throw cereal and people love it. Eat it up. Yep. But I don't know. It makes sense if Trent wins this. I don't particularly want him to, but Orange can take the hit, and Trent needs some sort of bump up and reason for leaving. Yeah, I think uh, Trent wins this one. I think it ends up being a beatdown to him. Yeah, he just he goes to another level to where maybe it's a referee stoppage or something crazy, and yeah, that way Orange saves face. Like he never gave up. He never tapped out. He never got pinned. It's the referee called it. Which you know, Orange Cash could take a loss and. Bounce right back Wednesday night, and everybody loves him. Oh, so yeah. It yep. ain't going to hurt him. No. Nah. Uh, then we move into – we got Jericho defending the um, – for the world title. It's the FTW title. Uh, he's got Big Bill with him. I think Big Bill's going to be a world champ in, in about a year or so if he listens to Jericho. We've said that before. But through a storyline that both – let's see, Monday Night Raw featured this. And so did AEW Dynamite this week, where you had a, a triple threat, and two of the three people won the match. Actually, it was NXT. It wasn't Raw. It was NXT that did this. So instead of having one person win a triple threat that goes against Jericho, you have Hook and Shibata, who got a double submission win over the Bounty Hunter. So now it's Jericho versus Hook versus Shibata, which means Jericho's going to retain. Yeah, and Jericho, as the... Um, FTW champion, which is a made up championship anyway. Yeah, and Hook Hook being in a match anywhere. All I got to say is, yeah, this is going to be the um, uh, stand in line for the bathroom and refill your snacks match. Yes, which you don't have to stand in line here. Everybody in my house is gone. Well, the youngest was still here, but he leaves for Florida Saturday morning. So the wife and the the Middle one's in Chicago. The oldest one's got a graduation party Saturday night. Won't be home, and the youngest one's leaving for the beach. So won't be any line at the bathroom here. There you go. Plus, you live in the woods. I do live in the woods. Now, the good thing is is that Bryce does not watch this show. I am all but positive he does not, because if he found out you had an empty house, he would move in right now. Uh, you know, we need to bring Bryce in to watch some wrestling with us. We do because he watches this and he he he'll hint at it at all the other things he does, but he never talks about it. Yeah, which hang on now. Sunday night is the right, the 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 Coke six hundred, so we'll be getting into, into his racing. So he's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be watching that sometime sure. though. You know, if you're a friend of Bryce and you know who Bryce is, which is weird because we're probably the only two of Bryce's friends that that actually watch this show or that are a part of it. But if you know Bryce or Bryce, if you do watch, come on the show sometime. Yeah, love to have him because he would spend the whole night making fun of us. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then he'd spend he'd spend the following night sitting right beside us watching whatever we're watching. Yep. That's what he does. Exactly. Uh in fact, Bryce might be the size of Takeshita. He that's about how big he is. Uh I believe he's taller than Takeshita. Probably so. I think he's six seven. Maybe we should start calling Bryce to catch to and see if he figures it out. Well, he's already got the nickname the bear. That's true. Because he looks like a big old grizzly bear. But this little side discussion also tells you how much we how much we really care about that Jericho match that we were already talking side things. I'm out on it. Don't care at all. Exactly. 
And we've got two matches left. I never understand what AEW's fascination with these stadium matches and these war games matches and all that's how you you that's how you get half your roster on the shelf. Um this one's gonna be kind of crazy. I feel like uh Tony Khan is gonna make an appearance. Maybe he runs somebody down with a with a golf cart or something. I don't I think he's gonna do something to help his side. That would be funny. Run them down, or better, I said he should dress as Jackson Deville and come take one of the young bucks out, and then flip the mask off, and the other one super kicks him. <laughs> I want to see him. Uh, I want to see him bust a fluorescent tube over uh, Matt Jackson's head. I I would pay money to see that. That would be good. I see. We're whatever they do, we're going to pay money to see it. Oh yeah, literally, absolutely, yeah. One way or the other, we are. But this is the stadium match they come up with. I don't know if it's Stadium Stampede or whatever random name they're given to it, but you've got the Elite, uh, which is Okada, Jack Perry, and the Young Bucks. Um, and I think Jack Perry is going to break out soon as the big star of that group. Against Team AEW, which I wish Kingston was involved, but if you're going to replace Kingston and you do it with Darby Allen, it's almost an upgrade. Uh, what you get Daniel Why are you he hurt? Who, Kingston? Yeah. He was in a match in New Japan, I think, defending his belt over there, or defending one of the belts, and he got suplexed onto the 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 ring fence, the, the barrier between the fans and on the outside of the ring, and his leg hit funky on it, and then it, it screwed his leg up. And then later on, he, he officially broke it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well... We win with this one because Darby will hit some high spots that uh, Eddie Kingston won't even attempt. So Darby will break his leg and he'll use it as a weapon. Yep, yep. We win in this one. Um, Absolutely. I, I, I don't know this. This uh, I, I can see. This is more like. I mean, they're trying to relive the '96 WCW where matt nick and and the elites the nwo and and we got team wcw and ftr and, yeah and danielson and and darby trying to you know save the company so i don't know it, it maybe maybe there's enough high high spots in there where it'll be entertaining yeah i i think i think like i said i think the star of this thing unless he gets buried early on it is is going to be jack perry but I look forward to the great spots, and I kind of hope T Team AEW wins. But if they don't, then this storyline will go through the entire summer. Yes, with other people defending the honor of of yeah. of, a, of AEW. Well, like you said, it's NWO WCW. When if it, it was what side are you on? You're either with us or against us. That's all this is. Right. But um, who do you think is going to win? Uh, I I can I can see why the elite would win. Um, to to continue the story, and if you're gonna make the type of heels they've turned Matt and Nick Jackson into, you just about have to let the elite win. Yeah, they're actually really good at being those kind of snotty people. Yes, they are. They 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 do this to the T, and they use the Sting farewell match to to do the heel turn, which was perfect. Yeah, we were upset and Sting was upset that he didn't end that match on his back. But when you see the bigger story arc this has become, it's exactly what should have happened. Yep, yep. They did, they, did, they did this one exactly right. Yep. Turns out they know a little bit about the wrestling thing. Sometimes. Uh, even though this is a uh, duplicate story that we saw 25 years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, I skipped over this one, but uh, I actually I like all the people involved. This is going to be fun. This might steal it, but I think there's too many people involved. Uh, I call them Bullet Club Gold still, but they are the Bang Bang Gang of Jay White and uh, Austin and Colton Gunn. They're going to face oh, the boys. Death Triangle. Yeah, they're going to face Death Triangle, who is finally all healthy again. You got Ray Phoenix, you got Pac, and you got um, uh, Penta. Penta. These are six people that are, it's going to be a lot like Mox versus uh, Takeshita. They're just going to beat the crap out of each other for 15 minutes. Uh, you know, the, the guns don't really belong. I don't know that they can. Physi Physicality-wise, no. I don't think they can go like 
like Panther and and Ray Phoenix and and Pac. No. But Jay Not White speed and, and physical, yeah. Jay White can. He's he's right there with him. So and maybe, I believe I believe this is for the six man titles because they they have three or four different versions of the belts that they call around now. Maybe um maybe the Death Triangle can, can carry the guns. I, w- I would be willing to bet they can, and I actually think that the Bang Bang Gang is going to win this because we're finally going to see Juice Robinson come back, and he's going to help his buddies. Oh, is he set to return? I don't know. I haven't heard a thing about it. I don't. I, I know he's been out on the shelf, and and uh, I know his girlfriend's tearing it up in Tony Storm, but I haven't heard a thing about Juice. You know what he reminds me of? You remember the Geico So Easy a Caveman Can Do It commercials? It reminds me of the caveman from those commercials. I was thinking uh, Loose Cannon, Brian Pellman, but actually caveman works better. Yep. Yep. And then last but not least, we get to the main event, which is going to be a, probably a four-star classic. Uh, Swerve is going to defend his belt against Christian. I, if this was any other time in both of their story arcs, I think Christian could pick up a victory because it, it would it would just solidify the the run that he's on. But it makes absolutely no sense for Swerve to drop the belt this early. He needs a solid win. Christian is probably the top heel in the company right now with everybody else out. And as good as this is going to be and with all the Christian entourage, Swerve's probably going to find some way to win this in the end. I think Swerve wins it in a DQ. Because it keeps the story alive, yeah. Yep, I think Kill Switch gets involved, and uh, the kid, uh, what's his name, um, Nick uh, Wayne. Nick. Um, Nick Wayne. Nick Wayne. Yep. And I think Mama Wayne is probably the one that's going to get him disqualified. Could be, because I she's probably going to try to do something behind the ref's back, and he's just going to see it. Yeah. So I I think Swerve. Don't win clean. I just think he wins in a DQ. Which is perfect for the way this is set up. I have no problem with that. Which, uh, Swerve winning clean would be okay with me too. And he's becoming real popular and he's starting to embrace it. He's not used to ever being the face. He's been the heel almost everywhere he went, all the way from Lucha Underground till now. So he's kind of starting to embrace that people do actually like him. And it's it's kind of boosted him up a little bit. He he's actually having fun. It looks like. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, and they've they've cut him loose from the Mogul Embassy, which I'm glad of too. Um, I like I like. Oh, him there you go. That, there could be a there could be a DQ based on them because the only one he didn't destroy yet was was Brian Cage. So, there, I mean, he kind of did, but if Brian Cage come out and cost it, you know, made this a DQ somehow, then then that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a uh, lot of stories you can you can shoot off of that. Oh yeah, and like we say, they're all buying time till MJF comes back and Adam Cole come back. So we're looking about a, another month and a half, two month run for Swerve, and and then it's going to get a little cloudy for him. Maybe um, what's the one at Wembley? All in. Yeah, I think so. Maybe at All in Wembley they'll all be back. That would be really good for AEW. Yep. But uh, about three minutes to go. Any final thoughts or anything we didn't go over you might want to mention? Um, It's, it's been entertaining. The shows leading up to the pay-per-view have been entertaining. Um, the matchup, the, the opening match from uh, Dynamite Wednesday was uh, uh, Will Ospreay and Orange Cassidy in a tag match together, which those two together are, are awesome. Oh, and yeah. so they've been doing a lot of good things. It's very entertaining. And, and I think this is uh, going to be one of their better pay-per-views they've had in a, in a while. Yeah. Cause they, they, they have stalled out a little bit. I'm not going to say they, they haven't been, they've been awful, but no, they've been pretty good, but they haven't been on that level. They were, and you're going to run into that. Sometimes you just run something into the ground or you run out of ideas or sometimes just, you put a great match just together. And it just comes match. out like crap. Well, it, there, it's like, it's like a football season, you know. You injuries to su- certain key players makes you not oh, that yeah. great. And when you got Adam Cole and MJF, which is two of your better guys on the shelf, it's kind of hard to put on five star matches. And, and and you know, Brian Danielson's been hurt for a, two years now. He's been wrestling yeah. hurt. Not seen the best of him either. 
Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, you know, like I said, Wheeler Utah's out. So it, it kind of breaks up the, the, the combat club. And there's, there's all these little factions that are, you know, juice Robinson out. There's uh, half a dozen people that uh, we haven't seen Britt Baker. We haven't seen Jamie Hayter. We have, there's so many people that have been out when they all come back, it's going to get really crowded again, but it's going to be really great because every match is going to be just top of the line. Right. And, and then maybe when everybody does come back, we can get more of a separation where certain certain guys wrestle on collision and certain guys wrestle on dynamite. Yeah, almost a brand split. I was about to say we could benefit from a brand split where, I mean, you don't even have to have a belt on each one, but just have about half of everybody on Saturday, about half of everybody on Wednesday, and Friday night is to tie up any loose ends. And you have the champ, whoever's the the world champ, back back and forth between the two shows. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and the tag belts, too. You don't need two sets of tag belts. They can go back and forth, and you just have a standalone middle title for both. Yeah, that way you get everybody plenty of airtime, but because there's two, I mean, two primetime shows. I, Collision, I do record it because there's a lot going on Saturday night, but I always watch it on Sunday. Yep. So it's not like you're know, not going to watch it because it's on Saturday night. No, yeah, that doesn't. If I'm free, I watch it, and if I'm not, I, like I, I do the same thing. It it hits the DVR, and as soon as I get a chance, it's it's on the TV. Right. So looking forward to it. Yep. But we're to the end of the show. We've got a couple seconds left. This has been fabulous wrestling talk. AEW double or nothing. It's this Sunday. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Pre-show starts at seven. But for my tag partner Clay Harden, I am Jeremy York. We will see you guys next time. Deuces, gooses. <laughs>